Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I am extremely delighted to have uh, Infineon here, which, um, surprisingly, uh, have excited not only here, friends here, but the entire region. Um, Sandbag and uh, Lucas, you are probably aware that uh, we have <laughs> exploited the presence and the support of uh, Infineon uh, as a pillar in our effort to encourage investments into this country. So for that, I salute Infineon. And um, when I was in Germany in the invitation of Chancellor Olaf Scholz, in my discussions with him, Infineon, of course, um, was mentioned. Uh, he was extremely delighted that uh, we welcome you and um, that Infineon have uh, agreed to expand your activities here and becoming a very large semiconductor enterprise. And in fact, he was joking in the lighter mode, note, saying that, um, well, uh, Prime Sanua, I would have wished that they expand and focus in Germany. Uh, but, but on a serious note, you know that uh, it is a major activity in industry in uh, Germany, well known to the world, and uh, for us, it is a, certainly a remarkable feat indeed. So there are a few issues that i like to raise here. Uh, first, your presence is um, not only um, an, uh, an entry into what is considered a new technology with green technology, with a, a highly focused and precise industry. And I want Malaysians to share this, to understand that this was built through research, highly skilled professionals and dedicated workers, and great discipline. And um, that's why you, you have created Infineon as a major uh, semiconductor enterprise, fab industry, and now a leading edge in this field. This does not happen, as you know, um, except for a clear direction, of course, policies of government that encourage those, but uh, the enterprising professionals and researchers in all fields. And um, we are fortunate again because when you enter this three with value-added activities, it becomes a potential catalyst for us in Malaysia. For example, to understand that nothing works without a clear discipline and focus. Nothing works without focus on research and development and creating highly skilled professionals that can fill this gap. So, in the decades that um, Infineon was involved here in the first the wafer fabrication at the back end, but what is to me astounding is the Infineon um, interest and commitment and confidence to enter into a new uh, uh, enterprise in the front end of fab industry, which is, to my mind, a great feat. And I think Malaysians should understand that. It is not a normal fab, with a fab uh, technology. We have now uh, in, uh, been, been recognized to be able to receive uh, uh, an, uh, an outstanding technology uh, technological enterprise that now cater for a front end. And uh, therefore, it shows that Malaysia has now gone up the ladder. And uh, we then need to 
be prepared. The infrastructure must be great. This involves Kulim High Tech, the state government, and the federal agencies. We should not and cannot tolerate inefficiency, any delays. Because when uh, companies like Infineon gives us that confidence, we must reciprocate with clear commitment. And that's precisely number one. Now, number two, the ecosystem. Why is Malaysia now regarded as a hub in the region for ecosystem? We're able to compete with our neighbors because we have an edge for the last two, three decades. So the ecosystem helps now, but it needs to be improved. I've always uh, emphasized the need for resilience. This culture of complacency or culture of contentment will not lead us anywhere. Of course, I'm delighted and thank you again. But that is not sufficient. What is lacking? I am of naturally proud to see some of our local players working with the German professionals in developing and this new fab culture, which is to me, mind-boggling. Mm. I come from a liberal arts background, so for back to force me to listen to this is a part of a torture by itself. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm again delighted because we have seen these young professionals coming up. But is it sufficient? No. That is why the synergy in the ecosystem must add, must uh, be prepared to make the necessary shift. The universities, the TVETs, must then come up with new plans, new directions, to ensure that the change is happening at a faster pace. Yeah. Now, I'm not here to, 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 to state what is already known, and uh, Tugu Zafru is here, in terms of um, the investments and, uh, and the new investments, the uh, new focus and uh, support that we are getting from many countries. And as, 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 as I've said to even Chancellor you know, Scholz, that we are fiercely independent. We want to befriend all our neighbours and want to attract their interests into Malaysia. And we have, been, we have been rather successful. But that is only a beginning. The infrastructure the ecosystem, the training, and we have called upon the universities, and I'm sure USM here, and the UUM, and the TVETs, and the institutions in Kedah, Penang in particular, must be receptive and undertake the changes at a faster pace. You can't talk about digitalization, innovation, AI, and expect to uh, obtain good results with a normal pace of change or development. Um, that is why I've called on universities we give all the necessary support in terms of the funding for research for new disciplines. Um, I've mentioned this in Kuala Lumpur that uh, a normal university when they want to start a new discipline will take at least one and a half years. It goes through a department um, and then through the dean, to the board of studies, to the senate, and then to the minister, ministry of higher education. I say, if you use that pace, it's no longer post-normal world. Post-normal world requires change, which is spontaneous at an unprecedented pace. Because once you slow down, you will lose the race and competition. And um, therefore, um, setting up, for example, an AI department or faculty, or what more, a university, would require us to employ the best from the country, from any religious denominations or race, and from the region or from the international community who can serve and contribute. So the, the pace of change and uh, to appoint those who are very qualified is, of course, a prerequisite to ensure 
the success of this endeavor. And um, we require what? 60,000 highly skilled engineers by 2020. But now we have adjusted probably by 2027. At the rate we are given the support, then the interest shown. Uh, as I've alluded earlier, the uh, Malaysia now is considered to be a hub for semiconductor industry. And this again is a remarkable feat, thanks to all the stakeholders uh, for playing their part. But my concern, as I've said, and I think and can, you can hear this, because to show that um, we are not sitting on our laurels. We are pushing this agenda forward, and to push the agenda means all agencies, all departments, all levels of professionalism must undertake this measure. I mean, this needs to be emphasized, I believe, my colleague, um, the minister, and Mr. Bissau will share this sentiment with me, that we cannot expect to be regarded as a successful player in this new technology if we continue to work at a normal pace. There are some other challenges. Infineon is known. I'm not going to talk about FAB, you have the expertise. But I understand the ecosystem that is required. It's not the old Infineon that you started, because you require green energy. From where? From the country. Which means we have to do push ahead. So you have highly skilled workers that you need, new, highly trained engineers, you need green energy through what? Through hydro, through gas, through um, the solar. Uh, now we are moving towards hydrogen, green hydrogen and ammonia, whatever is required. Then, if you get that in place, of course the infrastructure is less uh, challenging, but more importantly is the ecosystem that I have related to. And I think for the Malaysian government, we'll do uh, whatever is necessary. We'll continue to engage with you to make sure that we remain a very uh, attractive destination for investments. And I'm proud to say not only Infineon, but the Germany as a whole, and the, in the industry in Germany have, have chosen Malaysia as one of the major investment destinations. In our visit, uh, organized by Miti, Maida, and our colleagues, have shown that um, in the even the SMEs that conference that I attended, and also Hamburg, which is more aristocratic uh, environment, where they forced me to use a black tie. Uh, but uh, I've seen this uh, interest. My uh, focus is now to ensure that we do reciprocate and we take the uh, adequate measures now so that our economy will continue to grow. Now today, and today's events marks a major, a huge milestone for Kulim, for Kedah, and for Malaysia to showcase that we are able to attract world-class investments So, hand back, sir, thank you very much because uh, it is not just an ordinary feat. Because if you can, you follow some of our uh, discussions with potential investors, I would say, look, Infineon have decided, surely for good reason, for the infrastructure, for the attractive incentives, which is, of course, going to be discussed further, I understand. Uh, but for the professionals uh, and workforce, the discipline, and that's why they choose. And because of your presence, it becomes, I mean, and to place a world largest 200 mm silicon carbide power fab. That alone is a major selling point for us in the country. So thank you very much.
Assalamualaikum.